Hi, it's our second uh, video for this week and we're talking about uh, writing a results section. So in your results section, so the first thing you want to do is restate your research question and your hypotheses. So saying, again, this is what we we're looking for and this is how, um, this is the uh, interaction that we expect. This is what we expected to find. You've just gone through your whole methods of how you went to about um, uh, conducting the research. So you want to ground people again in here's the question, here's how we thought things were going to go. Next, you want to um, name the specific and uh, statistical analyses that you used. So if you use a t-test, say that. If you used an ANOVA, say that. If you used a chi-square, say that. Um, so say exactly the test that you did. Um, if you have multiple hypotheses, you want to run them down in an orderly kind of uh, fashion, starting with the most important and then going down to more sub uh, topics. So you'll start with that first um, question, research question, first hypothesis, um, second hypothesis, etc., and then talk about the, the tests that you did for each one. The next thing you uh, would need to do for your findings, and this is going to be important for your findings and for this class in particular, is that I would like to see your findings in terms of a narrative. What is the, in words, what you found? What was the research question? What was the hypothesis? What was the relationship that was discovered in words? I also want to hear um, about it in terms of numbers, in terms of the statistical tests um, that you did, uh, the numbers that you take from the output on the, your SPSS, um, the uh, significance uh, values, um, the effect size if you uh, work that out. You, my, I'm not requiring you to, to give me effect size, um, but we talked about before why it's important. So um, an effect size, uh, if you want to calculate that as well. I also want to see it in terms of either a table or a graph, some sort of figure. Um, so findings three ways, uh, one in words, one in numbers, and one in some sort of table or graph. The results section, really important here. I don't want any discussion of your findings. Don't tell me how you interpret it. You say, this is the hypothesis. We confirmed or we rejected the null. Um, so that's, that's as far as you go in terms of uh, interpretation. Don't tell me what it means. No implications. Just give me the results. Just give me the, uh, what came out of the analyses. This gets a little bit more interesting if you're talking about uh, qualitative work, but still, uh, just the results, what happened with that initial uh, hypothesis um, and hypothesis test. Okay, so again, um, if we're thinking about the full paper as a um, uh, hourglass kind of a drilling down to your particular study and exactly what you did and what you found, and then thinking about the implications and what that means. Um, the results is the first kind of coming from narrow to smoothing back out. So um, you, again, want to present your finding in three ways, narrative form, statistical language, in other words, um, T equals uh, P equals, right? So um, giving it to me um, in statistical terms at, like the output from SPSS and um, in a table or a graph. So an example from research that I've done, uh, looking at attention in different uh, cultural communities. Uh, here's my graph. So I color coded the um, groups that I per anticipated in my hypotheses were gonna go together. So this was an ANOVA that was done here, um, uh, comparing across these four groups. Uh, in our post hoc tests, we looked at whether, in particular, um, the formerly indigenous Mexican town and the U.S. Um, uh, formerly rural uh, town were different than the other three groups. So this is called a planned comparison. Um, we're not going to talk much more about that here. Um, essentially, 
uh, this is a special kind of a test where you're looking at um, my results are only going to go one way as opposed to um, saying I think there's a difference. So um, this was a planned comparison. So here are my results in um, narrative form as well as in statistical language, right? So um, children from the formerly indigenous town and the US Mexican heritage children both use simultaneous attention more often than children from other communities. So my, hypo my uh, hypothesis was that this was going to be the case and this is what my um, results found. Uh, T was 2.0 with a um, significance of 0.03, P equals 0.03. The um, children from a highly schooled uh, nouveau urban, we called it, a cosmopolitan uh, Mexican town <coughs> in US Anglo communities um, alternated their attention. So that's a different type of attention that we saw with them um, between lots of different focuses that they were looking at um, uh, when compared to children from the previous two communities that I had mentioned. So again, this is a planned comparison but I'm giving you the narrative form of what I expected to find or what I found, and then um, the uh, statistics form here as well. And that's what we've got for results. Just tell me what you got, tell me what the question was and how your findings addressed it, and leave the interpretation for the discussion. <laughs>